The Holy Grail was the cup of Christ used at the Last Supper. In itself, it is unremarkable in the Bible. Theologically, there seems to be a link between the four cups of Passover, the Last Supper, and the cup of consummation. During the Passover Seder, or order, there were four cups of wine, one called Kiddush, representing sanctification, one called Haggadah, representing proclamation, the Baraka cup represented blessing, and the fourth, representing praise, was called Hallel. This makes the Last Supper more interesting. It is a new covenant. During the Seder, the lamb must be eaten first. During the Last Supper, the lamb serves bread and one cup of wine. It says in Matthew, Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. In Luke, it says, After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. It goes on to say, In the same way after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go, as it has been decreed, but woe to the man who betrays him. They began to question among themselves which of them it might be, and who would do this. Joseph of Arimathea was said to have taken possession of Jesus' things after his death. He is mentioned in all four Gospels. Mark notes that he was a respected member of the Sanhedrin. Matthew calls him a rich man, and Luke vouches for him as good and righteous. He also writes that Joseph did not go along with the Sanhedrin in their plan to destroy Jesus. John called him a disciple of Jesus, but in hiding for fear of the Sanhedrin. All four Gospels record that Joseph went to Pilate, asked for the body of Jesus, and was granted permission that he put him in his own tomb and rolled the stone in front of it. While Paul makes no mention of him, just identifying that he was taken down from the cross, the Gospel of Nicodemus says it was Joseph who helped begin the Christian community at Lydda. It was not until 1135 AD, over a thousand years after the event, that the idea of his trip to England with the cup is recorded. William Malmesbury allegedly brought the cup of Jesus from the Last Supper to the church in Glastonbury, England. It is noteworthy that Malmesbury was writing a history of the ancient church. What remains unknown are standards of accuracy at the time. What lengths were taken to separate fact from legend? Some records survive from that time and are well known. It is worth noting that by 1135, the First Crusade had already occurred, and the Second loomed. 1135 is still ancient, but some histories from that time do aim for accurate recounting of events. Others clearly reveal that at that time the Church itself was the dominant organization for the recording, housing, and dissemination of records. The Grail is not mentioned in most Bible dictionaries. It is not in the Catholic Church's catechism. It is not in the writings of the early Church Fathers as a topic prior to the First Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. It is not mentioned by name in the Liber Pontificalis, the ancient Book of the Popes, which is a combination of ancient writings from the Church in its earliest days through the fall of Rome. It is part accurate history part legend, and part later forgery. It deals specifically with the progression of the Bishop of Rome. Its goal is probably to attempt to create a history that shows the Bishop of Rome as preeminent over any other, which it truly wasn't until much later in history if it ever truly was at all. Yet there is something interesting that may be worth mentioning. The First Council took place during the Pontificate of Sylvester. His documents contain the modern equivalent of millions of dollars in inventory. 
gifts, money, and property given by Constantine over to the new organization of church after the first council. The word chalice or sangal is Mesopotamian for nectar of supreme excellence. The cup is described as a jewel encrusted chalice. Most of the list contained in Sylvester's history contains quantities of things ranging from five to several dozen cups, bowls, chandeliers, and properties to convert into churches. Yet there are a few items for which only one was handed down. By the time of the Romans, though, it was called a paten, which means bowl or chalice. One item, in fact, is described as a jewel-encrusted chalice. Maybe this just adds to the mystery. According to an Irish legend, the prophet Jeremiah came there as a protector of one of Judah's princesses. Some have theorized that this means protector of a bloodline. This, like the other related Irish legend of the Horn of Plenty, the vessel represented the source of all good things like food, health, success in battle, and divine favor, were eventually merged with the idea of the Cup of Christ. King Arthur's legends define he and some of his knights as direct descendants of Joseph of Arimathea, who supposedly took possession of the cup after the crucifixion. There is also legend about a Merovingian baby in England. Merovingian meaning a bloodline from Mary Magdalene. This is a relatively modern idea. It is based on the merging of Irish legend about Jeremiah bringing the princess, but instead makes the princess the children of Jesus and Mary Magdalene instead of an actual cup. The vessel, a female womb. The mystery is further amplified by one writing from the 13th century. A Cistercian monk and chronicler named Peter of Vaux de Cernay claimed the Cathars, or Albigensians, believed that Jesus had a relationship with Mary Magdalene. It must be noted, though, by that time there are dozens upon dozens of writings surviving with histories. This is the only one that makes its claim. Was it the church's way of undermining the powerful southern French religious persuasions of the Albigenses that they would eventually launch a crusade against? Or was it a needle in the haystack? Much is written about the modern book Holy Blood, Holy Grail. The New York Times bestseller enjoyed success in light of Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code, which is a work of fiction. The idea once posited that while fiction it was rooted in non-fiction ideas of the faith, but it really doesn't even do that. In the modern era it has been responsible for a great deal of confusion about the Last Supper, Crucifixion, Jesus, and the First Church Council in Nicaea. The movie was a mystery that combined suspense with symbology and vivid ideas that, while exciting, rewrite the truth of Christian history. Much like the idea of the cup is legend, so is the idea that Jesus ever married. There is no mention of it in any church records or scripture even alluding to it until the 13th century monk. Later it gains a lot of steam in the 1800s and more in the modern era. The Holy Grail in truth may be the most vivid symbol of legend in the medieval world. It makes its first appearance in writing in 1180, in Chrétien de Troyes Percival. It is described as a jewel-encrusted serving dish. Basically, the quest to find the grail became a symbol for the quest of the knight towards self-perfection. Robert de Boron's Estoile de Graal, written in 1200 AD, fed this motivation for knights. Thank you for watching the Evangelist Nick Garrett channel. Please look in the video description for other videos, other mysteries and secrets of the Bible and church history. Please support my work by watching videos, leaving comments, subscribing, turning on your notification bell, leaving likes, having discussions with others about the material. You can also visit me on other platforms like BitChute, Twitter, and Facebook at Evangelist Nick G or Evangelist Nick Garrett. 
You can support my other nonfiction historical works at Patreon slash Shipwrecked Book. You can buy my books that just tell me the truth about Christianity series on the future of the church, the Crusades, the early church councils, and coming soon, the Reformation and Counter-Reformation at Amazon.com slash author slash Nicholas Garrett.